today we are going to be looking at um, the three lines uh, of evidence used for common ancestor of all hominids. Uh, the three lines of evidence used, number one, fossil evidence. Fossil evidence, we are going to look at the different fossils. Remember, fossils are remains uh, of, of living organisms. The, the, the organisms which existed, their remains uh, form what called uh, fossils. Number two, we are going to be looking at uh, the genetic uh, evidence. In this case, we're going to be focusing on the mitochondrial DNA. And then number three is cultural evidence. So the, let's look at um, the fossil evidence. This one um, is the one we, whereby students they think that is the toughest uh, part of human evolution. But it's not tough. It's only that you just need to understand the concepts and then you will be able to pass exams after something about this. Um, I will show you even how do they ask questions concerning about this um, uh, fossil uh, evidence. So we are saying that under fossil evidence, you need to understand what is a transitional fossil or what is a transitional species. A transitional species is the one that shows an intermediate characteristics between two genera. Remember when you say genera, we are talking about a genus. If it's one, if there are many, we call them genera or different species, or between between two uh, species. Or we can define a transitional fossil or species as is the one is the one with the characteristics common to both uh, ancestor species and the species that uh, follows. That's what I've tried to uh, explain. That at least you have to be with the same characteristics. Look at yourself, uh, you and your father and your grandfather or grandmother, you and your granny could be uh, the different species, for example. Uh, if, if your father has some characteristics uh, from um, the, 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 the granny, and he also has some characteristics from you, then we can say that a dad is a transitional fossil or a transitional species. It has the characteristics of the granny and has the characteristics of the son. So it means that he's, he's having two characteristics. So a transitional species is the one which has both characteristics of the ancestor and then the characteristics of the following what species yes <clears throat> so here is an example of a transitional fossil you have this uh, animal and then you have this animal yes they are birds dinosaurs uh, uh, whatsoever they are animals they are under kingdom and maria so you have this animal and then you have this animal so there is a transitional fossil of species here how is it a transitional species if you look at this species there are some characteristics of this bird or this animal and then some characteristics of this part of this animal. So if you look at these um, feet, you'll find out that they are, they are looking like this uh, ancestor. Yes, if you look at this part of the, the, the wing, it looks like the ancestor. If you look at this part, it looks like uh, this one. If you look at this part, it looks like uh, this one. So it has both characteristics of the ancestor and the characteristics of the, the following. So we, we call this uh, as, uh, we call it a, a transitional species or a transitional fossil. Uh, what are some of the important sites uh, in Africa which support uh, this uh, fossil evidence? Yes. <clears throat> Number one, uh, we are saying that the first, uh, we have countries, we have South Africa, we have look, we look at Kenya, we're going to look at Tanzania, we look at Ethiopia, we're going to look at Chad. If you look at uh, this map, it's showing you the different uh, countries in their location. So let's look at the evidence, uh, the fossil evidence. Uh, here you need to know at least the, the scientific name, common name, who discovered where it was discovered and at least the at the age so in this case uh, i've not included here because i have already designed uh, a small clip which uh, has all that information <clears throat> so you have the scientific name the first uh, fossil you need to understand is adipithecus ramidas which we call ad yes who discovered it is tim white yes and then where exactly is in ethiopia uh, sometimes uh, this one becomes the common name sometimes when you're asking we might not ask you uh, whether the common name or the scientific name we just ask you uh, a question which is open whereby you are supposed to answer depending on the what the question if you require a scientific name answer in the scientific name if it requires a common name answer the common name if just it's open you can choose whatever you want so we have the uh, Australopithecus apparensis uh, this one is called lucy the person who discovered it is uh, Johansson, 
Johansson discovered it in Ethiopia. Lucy, uh, uh, those people who watched uh, a movie called Lucy, you can even see uh, how did life uh, try to evolve. We have the three fossils, we call them Australopithecus uh, Africanus. The first one is uh, Taum Child, who discovered it, Raymond Dutt, uh, where exactly in Taum. It's called Taum Child because it was discovered in Taum. Then we have uh, Mrs. Place, Mrs. Place, uh, who discovered Robert uh, Bloom, discovered in Stackfontein. Yes, in Stackfontein Caves. Uh, sometimes you call them Stackfontein Caves in Taum. And then you have the Little Foot. Little Foot was discovered by Carl uh, in Stackfontein. Still, uh, they discovered it in the same place uh, uh, like, like uh, Mrs. Place. But uh, these, these um, they didn't discover them in the same uh, period of time. So sometimes you can ask a question. Uh, give two uh, post, um, Australopithecus African species are found in Africa or found in South Africa. Then you have, can now name uh, Town Child, uh, Mrs. Place, and then <clears throat> Little Foot. Sometimes you can ask, ask uh, which one of the following is known to Australopithecus African species? Then you say that. Uh, town child, Mrs. Place, Little Food, and then Carab. Because Carab is also Australopithecus, but doesn't mean that uh, it is Australopithecus Africanus. Sometimes you can ask a question, just give uh, three uh, Australopithecus uh, species you know. Here, when you say Australopithecus species, we are not saying that uh, give the Australopithecus uh, Africanus, it's just Australopithecus. Then it means that even Carab can be what? But if they are specific to Africanus, then you have to answer only question concerning about Australopithecus Africanus. Yes. So um, we have Australopithecus sediba. This one is called uh, Carabo, who discovered it. Is read the burger, the burger. <clears throat> and then where exactly Malapa in uh, cradle of humankind in South Africa. Yes, uh, Carabo has uh, some unique features. Sometimes it's called a, a transitional fossil or um, a missing link between Australopithecus, uh, between Australopithecus and, and Homo habilis. So this is a, a missing link between Australopithecus africanus and Homo habilis, or a transitional fossil. I explained the transitional fossil that is a species which has some characters of the ancestor and some characters as of the next one species of the following species. Australopithecus uh, sediba has some characteristics of Australopithecus africanus and Homo habilis. Therefore, uh, it is regarded as a missing link. Then another one is Homo habilis. Homo habilis means the handman. Homo means uh, man. Then habilis means hand. So who discovered it is Mary and Louis in the Old by George. They discovered it in Old by George, Tanzania. So basically, Yes, and then we have Homo erectus. Homo erectus. Erectus upright, yes. It means that upright walking man. Yes, Homo means a man, yes. A man, yes. Homo habilis, yes. Man, yes. So it means that upright walking man, upright man. Yes. This one is the one who discovered it, uh, Du Bois, uh, in Indonesia. So they. They, they, this, yeah, we, we, we have even in other areas, but the oldest was discovered uh, there. Then Homo sapiens is called a wise man. Wise man, yes. I heard of a school called wise man, yes. So maybe we can call it Homo sapiens school. All right, wise man, yes. Who discovered is Tim White still again? Or again. Um, he discovered this in Limpopo, in Western Cape, in KZN. Yes, all those are places we they discovered those are Homo sapiens. Now, as I'm asking you, are you not Homo sapiens? How comes that they're telling us that they discovered Homo sapiens? And even the one who discovered Homo sapiens is a Homo sapiens. Hmm? Is that does it make sense? The person who discovered the Homo sapiens is a Homo sapiens. So he discovered himself. Eh? All right. Here they are trying to mean that the oldest Homo sapiens. Yes. Oldest Homo sapiens. However, the person who is discovering is a Homo sapiens, but he discovered the oldest Homo sapiens. And where did he discover it from? Discovered it from those um, areas. Then not. Uh, Australopithecus sediba, which you call Carabo, is a transitional fossil. I explained this. That is a transitional fossil between uh, Australopithecus africanus and the Homo habilis, the, 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 the honeymoon. Between this and this, sorry, between this and this. So this, this Australopithecus sediba is the one which uh, tries to link between these two. And sometimes you call it a missing link.
a missing link, a missing link. Yes, number two is genetic uh, evidence. Genetic evidence, this is the mitochondrion DNA. Mitochondrion DNA. Mitochondrion DNA. Remember, when you're talking about um, mitochondria, we say that mitochondria are semi-autonomous. They are self-reliant. They have their own DNA. They are not being controlled fully by the DNA in the nucleus. No, it has its own DNA. However, the mutations which occur in the mitochondrion DNA, they are rare. And if they are there, we can use them to trace our lines of descent. But there is something special with the mitochondrion DNA. Yes, let me give you this example. Remember when you are talking about uh, fertilization in, 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 in reproduction, we say that the sperm, when it fuses with the ovum, only the head of the sperm fuses with the ovum. The tail does not enter into the ovum. And remember the, the middle piece and the tail, the middle piece is the one which has the, the, the mitochondria. So it's only the head. So the middle piece and the, the, the tail, they, does, they don't enter into the, the egg. What happens then? if it is like that, then it means that the, the egg will only have the mitochondria of the egg or of the ovum. So all of us, we have the mitochondria from the mothers, from our maternal uh, parents. So it means that if I, there is a mutation in the, in the DNA of the mitochondria, it means that only that of the lady will be passed to the next generation. So if we try to trace that DNA, we can see that, okay, it came up like this until we find the where it originated from. So I want to trace where the mitochondria from this, this, this. So I have the person here. I go like this. Uh-uh, father, mother, yes. In this case, I don't go. Why? Because it won't give me. I only go with the lady. Yes, you see. Now, when I reach here, the father does not give me the, the DNA. No. So I'll go with the female. I continue. When I reach here, then I continue with this. It means that the father doesn't give me. So this is where the mutation uh, maybe happened. Or I can continue until I find uh, the, the, the origin. So we are saying that mitochondrial DNA or mitochondrial DNA is inherited only from the maternal line, the maternal line, the mothers. And then you're saying that analysis of mutation on this, um, on this mitochondrial DNA, yes, shows that the oldest female, the oldest female ancestor were located in Africa. We are located in Africa. The scientists say that if, if, Eh? Uh, if um, Muslims call them call, call her uh, Hawa, yes, if originated from Africa, Africa. So Adam and if even if for, for, for guys is is East Africa. So it means that we are the we are the owners of this world because Hawa or Eve and uh, Adam originated from Africa. That's what they say, scientists. So we are saying that, and then uh, all humans descended, uh, descended from her. That is the mitochondria of Eve. That's the one I've been talking uh, about. Yes. So uh, basically, that's how you can explain. Whenever you see a tick, it means that, guys, don't miss out that point. Don't go to exam without knowing these evidences, without knowing these evidences. I repeat. Don't go to the exam without knowing these evidences because if you don't know them, then it means that you won't be able to get the marks. All right, let's continue. Then you are saying that cultural evidence, cultural evidence, tool making. This one using stone tools with cutting and um, sewing improved human nutrition like if you can cut the meat so it improves the nutrition so that you can kill the animal so that you can obtain nutrients from this what from this animal development of stone tools development of stone tools became more sophisticated as um hominins uh, evolved as these uh hominins uh, are evolving yes so the, the tools became more advanced it's like a phone you are 2000, uh, the phone was just like that, but as you improve, you go on going towards uh, 2020, it, it becomes more sophisticated. So that's what happened during those um, uh, ages.
And then you're saying that two required planning and thought. So it means that also the brain was also developing because they require planning and thought. You don't just come from nowhere and then you develop a, a tool. No, you can see them as they are just light. You can design them. But if you were the one by that time, you wouldn't have done that. A generation which will come, they will laugh at us, the kind of phones, the kind of computers we are using. Yes, they will laugh at us. You understand? Yes. So it means that technology or development of brain keeps on uh, evolving and evolving. Uh, so here is the tool they started with this. Check the kind of tool they started with. And then they, they started to modify it. And then they modified it up to this level. It shows that uh, there is development in thinking. There is development in thinking. So this shows that from here to this point, it shows that there is an increase in the brain. You can see that the kind of tools they are using here, uh, even the brain size here, you see, is, is just very small. The kind of tools that are here, these ones are more advanced than this. Even the brain size is bigger than this one. This is Homo habilis, this is Homo electus, and then the kind of tools now we are using are these ones. This is the, the Homo sapiens, yes. So by then, we used to have axe from stones and uh, pangas from the stones, knives from stones, but now we just have to modify them. Even now we're using the, the, the stones, the stones, yes, but they are just modified uh, to suit uh, the, what? Uh, the requirements. Yes, uh, basically those are the evidences out of Africa hypothesis, out of Africa hypothesis and the evidence for African origin of modern humans.